Hello everyone. I hope you're all safe. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're staying at home. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This tutorial is going to show you my full post-processing workflow from start to finish for exposure blending and color correcting um, an image in Lightroom and Photoshop. So we're going to start with the raw files in Lightroom. I'm going to do some basic adjustments to get them matched up. We're going to go into Photoshop. We're going to use the technique I showed you in the first tutorial using apply image. We'll do a bit of sharpening. We'll bring it back into Lightroom and um, I'll probably crop it and stuff like that. The reason I go from Lightroom to Photoshop to Lightroom is I like the way that Lightroom catalogs photos and I use these collections up here and I have them synced so I can download the image straight onto my phone for when I'm sharing it social media and stuff like that. Um, I find Photoshop a much more powerful um, raw, raw, raw editor basically. Um, Lightroom is catching up especially with his range masking and stuff like that now but I still prefer Photoshop for like selective adjustments, masking, etc. Okay, so I hope this video doesn't drag on too long. I I don't care about like the video being longer than ten minutes or anything like that for YouTube. I don't. I'm not trying to monetize my videos. I couldn't give a hoot when I did anything like that. I just want to give you the information that you need to improve yourself in Photoshop and Lightroom and edit these images. Okay, so we've got three exposures here. This was shot on the summit of a mountain called Sea Fin, and Sea Fin is is in the Ballyhower Mountain Range, and um. This is the highest peak, now it's not that high, it's like 520 metres above sea level, but it's classified as the highest peak in the Valley of Horrors. And there's this uh, stone cairn at the top of it, and really nice subject for a sunset photo. So as you can see, I have three images here, three exposures. Um, This is my shadows. This is going to be another exposure for kind of my mid-tones, and then I have one here for my highlights. What I will say about my shadows exposure, if I was to critique myself, it's still a bit underexposed, okay? So I would make that a bit brighter when you're shooting out in the field. What you'll notice is when you're trying to blend images, okay, you need a subtle transition of exposure between each one, a subtle transition of light. So there's no dramatic change in light between these three exposures, but they do hit on each level that we want to hit on in terms of exposing for our shadows, mid-tones and highlights. But if there was two contrasting um, a change or a transition between light then it wouldn't blend naturally okay and the end result is something like this okay really nice warm punchy image that has good dynamic range but it also looks really natural and it's not HDR okay so I'm going to try and replicate this as best I can all right so first thing we have to do is we have to increase the exposure of this because uh, this image because I underexposed a bit too much so this is my shadows so i'm going to bring them up a touch okay and just expose the shadows a bit better okay and i'm also going to warm it up so we have to match the three images in terms of white balance and um, just so that they blend naturally okay so i'm going to warm it up naturally because it was a sunset shot okay i'm just going to warm this up as well so i'm applying the same kind of white balance adjustment to the three images just so they blend naturally um don't need to do anything with this exposure. This one, I might pull the highlights down just a bit more, just to bring back this area. Not too much. And this one, actually might bring up the shadows just a bit, because this is going to focus on this area here. Okay. Um, another way you could do this is you could open these three as smart objects in Photoshop. So if you bring your files straight into Adobe Camera Raw, we'll say, uh, you're just going to do the same things I'm doing here. I'm just using Lightroom. Some people will use Adobe Camera Raw and then bring it to Photoshop. I'm making these adjustments here now in Lightroom. Um, the benefit of opening them as smart objects in Photoshop is you can make more adjustments as you're blending just to get them to match up. But this is a really easy blend, so we shouldn't have any issues. All right. So once I'm happy enough um, with my exposures, I'm going to hold down the Shift key here, select all three of them, right click, edit in, and open as layers in Photoshop, okay? And um, yeah, we're gonna use apply image. Now the reason I can use apply image here is because it's a really easy blend. Um, it's not too hard, it's not too contrasting or any of that. It's an easy blend where I don't need any luminosity mass. In some scenes I would need a bit more luminosity or I would need to use, I should say, luminosity mass because it's a bit more challenging, but this one, there's no issues at all. Okay, so, I'm going to bring my shadows exposure to the bottom and I'm going to bring my mid-tones in the middle. So I have my darkest exposure on top, 
there's my second exposure and there's my shadows my brightest exposure we'll call it uh, on the very bottom and as you can see there's movement so if you keep your eye on this mountain here as i click at this on and off there's a bit of movement okay that was just it's very windy and if your camera moves any bit at all there's going to be movement between the exposure so very easy to correct so just hold down shift select all three of them go to edit auto align layers and click auto is generally the best one click ok and if you have a look now there is no movement or very little between the um the exposures okay the reason we had to align them is because we'd have ghosting um after we after we blended them if we didn't align them okay so on to our blending process so make the top or this middle layer here invisible so i'm gonna blend the mid tones into the shadows so make the middle layer here invisible put a white mask over it with the white with the mask selected got image apply image and make sure your settings are the same as mine here okay and turn it on now as you can see we have blended in our mid tones now we have lost once again a bit of contrast here in the shadows which i can easily correct i'm going to do a separate tutorial on showing how these masks are created in apply image and how we can kind of create more targeted masks but for the moment um we don't have to do we don't have to do that this is this is enough so okay we've lost a bit of contrast here so with my paintbrush selected black paintbrush because it's a white mask and nice big brush choose an opacity of about 60 percent and paint back in the areas that we lost there so if i toggle that on and off okay perfect paint back in these these areas we don't want to lose these highlights that are in our shadows here we want to keep them keep those bright areas okay perfect now now all i have to do is blend our darker exposure in here so select the darker exposure put a white mask over it go to image apply image click ok once again and there you go we blend it in so look at this area we blend it in these highlights now once again this is where the benefit of creating more target masks will come in as you can see we've lost all the contrast there in our in our foreground but that's like, once again no problem at all we have our black mat or our black brush set up we have our opacity and we can just paint out that exposure there from where we don't want it which is our which is in our foreground okay i notice i say okay an awful lot in my videos and i do when i'm teaching so i just can't say okay okay i think it's just um actually i don't know what it is to be honest with you. And yeah, no, we don't want just make sure that oh. Okay, so if that happens like what just happened to me there, reduce the opacity of the brush to make it a more subtle transition, okay? Paint that in there like that. Perfect. And there you go. If you want, if it's a bit strong for you. Just reduce, you can reduce the opacity of the layer like that. You can reduce the opacity of your brush. And you can paint back in those brighter areas there if you want. Okay, there you go. That is our blend done. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hold Control, Shift, sorry, Shift, Control, Alt and E. Combine them into one new layer that we can work on now. Um, so this is kind of like a, what's called a destructive method of um, processing in Photoshop. Basically, I can't go back now once I've once I've created this layer. But I'm happy with the blend. I won't know. I know I don't want need to go back anymore. If you want to do it non-destructively, you would go like that and right click, hold them down, and you would group them all into a smart object. Okay, so. Now onto our kind of bit of dodging and burning, bit of sharpening. So I'm going to go to filter. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to call that sharpen. So I'm reaching over the keyboard here. So this is going to be my sharpen layer. So filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And this creates a really nice, um, a really nice way of sharpening. So you can go threshold something. I generally have to buy settings like that. Okay. And that's how to sharpen my image up for me. So 
I want to make it a bit warmer, so I'm going to go up to here to my adjustments. I'm going to go to photo filter. And I'm going to add a warming filter. And you can choose whichever warming filter you want. But I like the this 85 here. And as you can see, it's after adding lovely warmth to the image itself. Now, a bit strong. So once again, we can reduce the opacity of that warmth. And I can also... It's gone a bit too warm here for me. So I can brush out a bit of that there. Okay, from my foreground. All right, and as you can see, there's a before and after. Now, just as I'm looking, that's still a bit bright here for my liking. So I'm gonna take my adjustments, I'm gonna open up a curves layer. I'm gonna select the hand tool here, and I'm gonna just select my whites here, and I'm gonna bring that down a touch. Now, as you can see, it's obviously that's a darkening the whole image. We don't want that, no problem at all. Hold Control and I, or Command and I, and we've now inverted the mask, okay? So by inverting the mask, we've changed it from a white mask to a black mask. And when a black mask is visible or is selected, then nothing is visible in the image. So white, or select the paintbrush, and you guessed it, it's going to be a white brush this time, okay? Make it nice and big, and just darken in a bit of that. Brush back in a bit of that darker exposure that's underneath. And there's the before and after. Okay. Perfect. It's too strong. I can see some areas might be too strong. Just brush that out. This is the beauty of Photoshop. You can brush things out. And just for selective adjustments, it works really well. So see, we have to bring in back those highlights there in this region. Okay. Um. Next thing. I'm gonna once again combine them into a layer just for a bit of dodging and burnings. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we are going to do a bit of dodging and burnings. So I'm gonna take my dodge tool, I'm gonna to have my shadows about 9% and I wanna dodge in a bit more exposure here just into my foreground just to bring out the light. Okay, so you can see the before and after. Just a bit more light out in those areas here where the sun was setting, the sun was hitting it. And let my burn tool and I'm just gonna burn some of the darker areas here where I don't want the eye drawn to. Really quick. Okay, and there's a before and after as you can see. Alright. And um yeah that's it I think. That is my edits done in Photoshop. So if we go back to the very start what we started with I hope to click at the mouse and I just I use the tablet, the Wacom tablet with the stylus. Sometimes it's hard to control. So here's our first image, blend in our mid tones, blend in our highlights, sharpened our image. We added warmth with the photo filter. We brought back these highlights here with our curves adjustment, and we done some dodging and burning. Okay, and that's our Photoshop editing done. So if I hold Control and S or Command and S, all right. That will save it and it will automatically bring it back into Lightroom for me. Hopefully. Yes, here it is. Okay. If we compare it to my image I have finished. So we still have a few things to do, which I'll do here in Lightroom. So I'm going to crop the image. So I'll go to our crop tool here. And I think I'm going to go for a 4 6 crop. Okay. And I'm just going to bring back in this here a bit. Just to bring it a bit closer. Okay, lovely. It's made to making a world of difference. It's amazing the difference a crop makes. Isn't that right, Mark O'Brien? Mark is uh, the first time I actually got really um, conscious of cropping and the impact crop. The impact crops make basically an image is through Mark O'Brien and Ferris. And Mark uh, was there one day and he was cropping in camera. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, cropping camera gives you a greater per like you can frame things better and it's 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 a, an invaluable tip now so it is so all i done there was add some vignette just to frame this area a bit more so i brought down the vignette a bit of noise reduction okay and that's really it very little done if i wanted to make it a bit more on the sunset side of things okay bring my oranges down 
towards the reds a bit more. And there you go. That is the image finished. Let's see what it's like in comparison to the other one. Not bad. I think I prefer this one actually. It's a bit warmer, a bit more golden. So yeah, this is what these are what we started out with, folks. And this is what we finished up with. Blended the three images in Photoshop using apply image and a bit of color correction. So I hope that was helpful. As you can see, I didn't touch I didn't touch any contrast up here or nothing. Don't really like this slider. I rarely use it. It tends to crush the details in your images. Um, if you can get it right in camera or out in the field like this, create three nice um, sharp exposures that have subtle transitions in light in them that you'll be able to blend naturally and hopefully you'll end up with an image like this. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Let's see what time are we on. We're on 16 minutes. Oh, holy moly, it wasn't meant to be that long. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Stay safe, stay at home. Please let me know what you think of this. If you're enjoying these tutorials, let me know. Um, you can subscribe on YouTube if you want. They'll, regardless of how many subs I get, I'm always going to be uploading tutorials anyway. And they'll be uploaded to Instagram. If you're watching this on Instagram, I include the YouTube um, link in the description. So you can watch it on a laptop or a PC. Sometimes it's easier than watching it on a phone screen, okay? So, yeah. I'm Ramden now. Good luck. I'll chat to you soon.